Okay, in preparation for next Sunday's game, I've set up a um, small scenario so we can try out the handling or at least give some advice of the handling of the remote weapon stations um, on Kongsberg. We will be using the Protector M103 for the recon vehicles and the uh, one. 5-1 uh, for uh, PCs and support units. Okay, with the Contact. with the F2 you you get into the gunner's view of the remote weapon station. Usually it's pretty far zoomed in, so to get a better overview view you can zoom out. Things you need to check um, before you can run it. You have the menu button here. Check out that the ammunition with select, you can select the menu, is the same as up in, uh, in the window. Here for the M153, um, the save around is the standard. But if you use uh, another ammunition, the uh, ballistics will not uh, match. So, for example, if we go to the next vehicle. Here it's set to uh, the uh, Sable round, but we have actually the uh, high explosive round loaded. We need to go to the menu. With left, right, you can move it. You can press select and then move it down to the right ammo. Press select and then turn the menu off. You can only access the menu when a weapon is safe. When you need to fire, you need to flip open the safety uh, cover and then arm the weapon. Once that is done, you can fire the weapon. If the weapon's not armed, it will not fire. Also, if some hatches are open, you will not be able to move the weapon into that area. Let's let me show that on a different weapon station. You see uh, the hatch is opened, so uh, you have a safety override that you can use and then you can at least move and arm the weapon. You can not only not fire into the direct area where the heads are sticking out. So the weapon will move around that area. If you don't have the safety override, in that case you can't move the gun at all. You close the hatches this safety yeah it's closed and then the safety uh, area will be turned off again and then you can use the gun again good another important feature for um, our recon guys will be the wide field of view stripe. You go to settings, select camera, then you can select the wide field of view stripe. So you will have, even if you're Gun is zoomed in to engage targets. You will have the upper part of the monitor to get an overview where you're looking at. Again, while the menu is on, you cannot 
fire the weapon, so as soon as you arm the weapon, the menu will be off. Note that this is not present if you press plus standard steel beast um, key binding with the thermal imager. Uh, you don't have an extra camera for wide field of view. Okay, next thing, the lead angle. As long as this light here burns, the lead angle will always be applied. So if you track the target, lays. the weapon system will automatically apply a lead angle. If you don't want that, if you need to engage quick and it's close range or of many different targets, just turn it off. Then you can lace and basically spray. Next thing. Um, Yeah, zoom in, zoom out, that's clear. Uh, that's a uh, normal focus. You can uh, press uh, autofocus to get a better view. You can switch between day and night. You can use... No, you can't use a filter. But you can in the... Ah, okay. You should not press that. <laughs> you're calibrating the optics, then you will be blind for a moment. You can select the low light mode. Then you will have gray image. But I don't think that's really helpful, helpful in game. I removed the wide field of view stri uh, stripe. I set to normal day. You can change the balance, but I don't really see that do anything. Also, you have a laser pointer. That's uh, one useful feature. You have it off. Infrared doesn't really help much at daytime when we will doing the missile, uh, the mission. So it will be to um, the visible light. Low power, high power doesn't really make difference in game because we don't need to be concerned about our eye safety. He's warning us here. We select that and then using F5. Here on the menu, you can aim at the target. Maybe you want to show your tankers that there's enemy inside the tree line. You aim there, you press the laser pointer and then basically you can mark them with a laser beam. Uh, anything else? Um, yes. If, uh, especially with high zoom, the speed of the um, elevation and azimuth control might be too high. So a good uh, setting is like 10%. Then the system will move slower. You see it here on the left side. You change the speed of the uh, controls. And 10% is a good value if you want to use um, High magnification. Okay, anything that I've got? Yeah, you can fiddle around with the optics so you you see best. 
but uh, yeah, that's mainly playing around a little. Uh, the more important stuff is, um, yeah, getting the weapon right, getting uh, the weapon armed, overriding the safety if needed, applying and deapplying lead angle. getting extra camera views where I find this uh, rather useful for yeah getting an overview selecting uh, that's okay I've got to check where I can change the rate of fire there's a different control panel for each version of the um, Kongsberg Weapon Station. Oh yeah, that I nearly forgot. Rectical selection. This crosshair basically uh, is uh, your aim point, but as the M2 is a kind of an area weapon, it sometimes makes sense select another uh, reticle so you can better observe the fall of shot. Uh, one that's uh, rather useful is this here. So again you go to settings, select reticle selection and then with U and D can choose different crosshairs oh, that's too far and then you have a pretty good way observing your fall of shot ah here now I found the button. Currently is uh, set on burst. Changing the rate of fire is full auto. Single fire. There's an electromechanical trigger that will just push the firing the trigger once and then uh, lets it go. We have burst at reduced speed. Basically that's quick single fire. So you can hold and low rate of fire continues. Especially useful if you wanna suppress somewhere. You can basically hold the trigger and the gun will fire with around 100 to 160 rounds per minute. Yeah. In case you have a misfire, which will not happen in Steel Beast, you can charge the gun again. Okay, I hope I didn't forget anything and I hope that was helpful to get up to speed with the Kongsberg. Good night.